so the stream should be online now. Hello, hello everyone who joined the stream today and is interested in the topic that I'm talking about. So my name is my name is Christoph and I'm a freelance animator from Germany. Um, animation is my passion and yeah, I've been doing professional animation for a year now uh, well if you can consider this as professional I've been working on a few animes doing some commercials and all that kind of stuff um yeah I didn't didn't expect so many people to actually come here and check out this video this uh, the idea for this live stream mainly just uh, happened or like um, because a lot of people asked me questions on how to get started how to stay motivated if I can check out their animations give them feedback etc all this kind of stuff and as as much as I like to respond to everyone and I'm I really appreciate that everyone has this uh, this this urge to talk to me it's very freaking exhausting it's so much it became so much lately so um yeah this video is mainly um uh, aimed at all of you basically at everyone it doesn't matter what kind of skill level you think you have um i hope that you can that all of you can take out a little bit interesting information for this and yeah then Hopefully you guys are good and good to go and get into the right direction to actually, you know, become a professional animator yourself. This stream will be also very boring. I will not have any music going on. I will just mainly be talking. Um, I'm also a little bit nervous because there are quite a lot of people watching. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll be all good. <laughs> So I really appreciate all the interest. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, let's get started, right? So the first point that I have on my list is software. A lot of people ask me about software. What kind of software do I use or what kind of stuff do I use to actually get into my animation? And the answer is it doesn't really matter that much. Um, Though there's um, two different in software, uh, two different, uh, three different softwares. So basically, you have the starting out softwares, which might be softwares like Rough Animator, Cl Flipper Clip, Pivot Stick Figure Animator, whatsoever. These softwares have all very limited use, and the tool itself is kind of. Yeah, you will, you, at some kind of point, you will not be able to get much further with it. Especially not if you want to get into the professional direction. So, if, if, it, comes, if it comes to professional direction and probably the best free, t free uh, online, online software that is free to use is uh, something like Macromedia Flash. It's a very old software, but... Yeah, it helped me to get into into this professional idea. It has m plenty of tools, plenty of plenty of things that you can do with uh, with the software. So it's probably one of the best softwares that I can recommend right now. It's easy to get and doesn't doesn't cost any money. So if you want to get more professional and have some actual decent software to use, there's there's millions of other softwares. Softwares like Toon Boom, uh, TV Paint, uh, yeah, Blender. Well, Blender is free to use as well and also very professional. Like this is one of, one of the best softwares you, you can use probably right now if because you have everything in there, two, 2D and 3D. Uh, so yeah, please inform yourself about this topic. I don't want to go too much into this and explain how every software works, but I will get like give like a basic overview of how 
every software uses like basically the or how every software kind of has similarities when it comes to animation. Um, so first of all, um, in animation, in animation software, let's let's actually open up our software right here. Um, here's my timeline. All my w windows are floating around. I'm using Clip Studio Paint X, by the way. Um. So um, we do have our timeline right here. It's on the bottom. There are other softwares like Flash. They basically have the timeline over here. Or I don't know. If you use a 3D software, you will probably also find the timeline on the bottom. Um, so how every software works is just um, every, most of the animation softwares work with 24 FPS. That means they work with 24 se uh, 24 frames per second. I, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are aware about this. So. Um, but there's a difference that we need to really need to be aware of. So if we do a frame right now and it's basically a drawing on to, on the, on this frame, you can see how like now the number two appeared on my timeline. Uh, I created basically a new cell and the importance between difference between frame and cell is just on the cell is just this one drawing. So for example, we have um, our cool, weirdly wobbly stick figure guy. He's he is uh, he is not too happy about how I drew him. But yeah, he is now on a cell. And the important fact about the cell is that the cell can be over a longer duration of the uh, of frames. So that means it's very important for us to uh, to know that a cell can have a different front timing. So, um, for example, I would like to, I'm, I'm gonna start with something simple. I'm gonna animate some real quick run cycle for you guys. Hmm, uh, probably around eight frames. Uh, all right. So the, well, what I'm gonna do is, um, first of all, I'm gonna delete this, and yeah, um, I'm just gonna get into it, animate it real quick. So uh, I'm sorry if the explanations are like not as not as good as they usually would be. Um, so we got the hips over here. So what I'm drawing right now is basically a gesture. Um, I'm now like diving in already into the fundamentals and basics. Um, w if you guys want to, we can also do the bouncing ball practice together, but that's that one's very boring and very standard. So I actually assume that most of you already tried this one. So that's why I'm basically going right into the run cycle drawing my gesture, which is basically just my stick figure. And, um, yeah, try to animate that one. Uh, oh shit, my mom just came back from, from buying groceries. So, uh, um, okay. That was probably an information over you if you needed to know. But yeah, I'm just a human myself. Um, I'm not making as much money that I can like move out that easily. Hopefully it happens soon. Well, I'm in a good way, but yeah. So for most of you people, y your um people, it gets uh, it gets very distractive when you like try to concentrate on animating too many details within your character. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to break down our our. Our character into a gesture, into into some kind of stick figure. So basically, imagine you have shoulders, a spine, hips, legs, feet, um, arms, hands, 
and a circle for the head. So basically this is our standard stick figure. This is like the, the most important part is for us to break down each of these body parts into individual lines. It's very freaking important. It's the fastest and easiest way to actually construct a body. So, um, if we have that, it's easy for us to just wrap around the volume around these body parts. For example, we have the torso right here, which is basically some kind of egg. Then we have a bean for, for, the, for the hips. Then for the feet, you might use triangles, whatever you want to use. Um, for the hands, we use more triangles. Yeah, and, and basically that is how we wrap around our our form around the stick figure to give it some volume. Now we can actually use that volume to move it within a 3D perspective. Uh, it's very freaking very freaking important. Since since uh, 3D is basically just an illusion within a 2D software, um, it, um, we need to think about things like foreshortening. That's, uh, that means if we, for example, you know, draw a hand like this, uh, and we want to move it in perspective, so we have got our shoulder shoulder right here. Um, it, the arm itself will become shorter when it moves towards the camera. That way we can maybe give the illusion of death. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Things like this is basic, uh, is basic foundation of drawing. So what you need to do is draw a fucking lot. Try to get your 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 drawings in every day. Get you grab a sketchbook, drag, grab anything you can basically draw on, and try to draw frequently, day day by day, every day. It's very freaking important. Okay, now we wrap this up and we basically cons constructed our body, broke it down into a stick figure. It will become much easier to animate this. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn on my onion skin for this one. And yeah, I'm gonna start animating my stick. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm also using circle, circle kind of shapes. So since you all know how the uh, the 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 bouncing ball works, it's basically he he falls down and uh, comes back up right here. He is uh, like speeding up in terms of t uh, because of the gravity, he's getting pulled down. And then it's like getting reflected with the same speed once it collides, uh, collides with an object or like maybe the ground or something. Okay. So I'm just using this easing out, easing in technique from the most foundational practice that is that's out there and like just applying it to my animation. Since, since we know everything we, we see in real life moves with an arc, uh, uh, for example, my arm right here. Um, it will create the illusion of a smooth motion to our A. So um, it's a very important factor that you check your arcs and always have these very round motion curves so uh, that, that, um, that the body can, uh, that the A can follow up. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm still a little bit nervous because, uh, <laughs> but um, hopefully so far everything is understandable. So yeah, now my character stepping on onto onto the field, doing his run run, uh, run walk cycle. Mm, what I'm doing basically right now is I'm flipping the frames. So. I always flip back and forth to see how the line is moving. That way I can have an easier time to actually keep the consistency and the length of the line. And I can always see how the joint is moving within this arc, you know? 
Um, it's a very common technique that's also been used on paper animation. They basically always flip the frames back and forth to see how the line is moving. And yeah, it doesn't matter if it's western or anime, it's, it's still a very common use technique. And I greatly suggest to set up your hotkeys um, so you can flip the frames back and forth. Okay. Um, so this this leg is behind the other. Wow, man, you got you got pretty big hips, man. Oof. Um. Yeah. Now I'm draw basically drawing out the key poses that I need for my run cycle. Uh, I already think about the the in between motion since I'm animating straight ahead. I'm not using pose to pose, I'm not a big fan of it. I do use it sometimes when it's needed and if I want to save some time. But mainly I'm trying to focus on using straight ahead because if you use it a lot, you will get a way better feeling for natural motion itself. Mm, so I feel this is a way more convenient and also more effective um, method to actually learn animation. It's just my personal preference though. Most people will probably tell you to learn pose to pose and that's probably also the standard that you will learn in school because it's mainly what the, uh, the industry uses nowadays. But yeah, to me it uh, loses like some of the natural motion or like the natural feel for motion and at some point because the most people who just use pose to pose they have very inconsistent drawings or there's like a lot of inconsistency issues um, sometimes the, the stuff is just kind of flat kind of yeah limited because they don't use many frames to animate the motion so they never get the full grasp of how the motion actually works and yeah, that's that's something I actually want uh, want to like avoid. Now, I really want to get out the full motion and get the full idea about the motion because it's very freaking important. Um, in terms of like getting a decent quality out there for your for your for your animation. Um, let's see. Wait a second. The run cycle will look freaking bad, but. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully he does it job. <laughs> it's very rushed, very fast. Yeah, I'm gonna do a, like a, a live stream st a session about like doing a mm, an actual full fleshed animation later on. That's gonna be over an hour, and that's gonna be like not a tutorial. In that kind of time, I'm gonna answer all your questions. Gonna get back at back at you, can you uh, and I'm gonna try to 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 help out all of you guys as much as possible. But yeah, for now I'm just you know rushing through through the topics that I've written down and I want to discuss. So yeah, my stick figure is very easily drawn as you can see, and hopefully I can get it looped correctly. Um. Yeah. Whoops. I think I I really chose an unfortunate position to start with the run cycle itself. Not the best pose, not the strongest. Hmm. So where do I left off? Yeah, I was talking about post to post and straight ahead. It really is personal preference which one you prefer to use. But if you want to like get the full package, you need to use both at some point. Uh, both will be very freaking helpful as your development or uh, um, as an animator. So b none of these te there's no better technique basically. There's just these techniques that they they just, just simply exist in. 
can be both very beneficial for you. So let's check if I actually didn't, uh, if I messed up, uh, how, how much I messed up basically. So what I'm doing right now, I'm gonna y use the frame 8 and frame 1, put it on the beginning and the end of my timeline so I can see the onion skin of it. And then have the cycle, you know, work out a little bit better. Seems to be uh, not too bad, maybe. Um, I'm basically in betweening this frame right here. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go through a few basic and fundamentals with you, like after this this run cycle. Just in case uh, that some of you uh, might forgotten about a few of these fundamentals, because these fundamentals always need to be, you know, uh, picked up at some point. Because your brain will steadily forget about them if you like ignore them or don't use them actively anymore. So. I think the, the reason why I have like a really good foundation is because I'm explaining so much to, to new people most of the time and always give them an idea about how fundamentals them, uh, itself work and I always give them quite a lot of advice so sometimes I'm drawing like quick animations like this one so yeah the run cycle is kind of done looks pretty whack um, uh, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Why does it look whack? <laughs> oh yeah, I kind of messed up on the on the leg positioning right here. So the one leg needs to be in front of the other. Whoops, that happened. Oh my eraser is way too big. Oh Jesus big mess up time mm. this pose is just very off told you I I start with an unfortunate position mm. Yeah, now I'm basically just fixing up so it loops a little bit more better. That's also part of the progress to do the mistake, to mess up. Because nobody of us is freaking perfect and we all do millions of mistakes. Uh, okay. I think it should loop a little bit better now. Oh yeah, that's much better. As you can see, I actually created... A decent run cycle, which is probably fine enough. But yeah, this is my rough gesture. So um, for animation, this would be like my first draft. Uh, um, if I want to, if I if I wanted to make this more professional now, I could clean it up, add some volume onto it. So what I would do is probably I'm gonna turn down the opacity of the layer, make new layers. And then, you know, draw over it, add the volume, etc. Step by step. I'm gonna draw this in another color, probably also with another brush. Something that's more clean. I don't know, I can give him muscles now. And all this kind of stuff. All the details that you all wanna add so, so desperately. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe give him hands. Ace, nose, etc. Maybe give him some hair too. Um, so. That would be basically my first cleanup frame after I created my gesture. Or like ba basically the construction construction itself. It's not even cleanup. 
for cleanup I would probably also you know would need to add some cloth and stuff like that but yeah we are like basically going layer by layer and then stacking up these all these individual information that we need to you know to add it onto my, onto our character so for example I could now add another color and add his shirt Mm, things like that so yeah if you start to animate please make sure you go step by step everything takes its time as you can see I invested like I don't know maybe 10 minutes now to do to my to my uh, to do my run cycle um yeah if I wanted to clean this up I would probably take a little bit longer as well since I'm just human and yeah as I said I need some time to draw this is all very very rushed and probably not really sound really not really yet I'm not too happy with it but yeah so um for more fundamentals we're gonna make a new animation file and I'm gonna go through the very very basics with you in terms of timing and spacing I'm gonna use the bouncing ball practice for this dude I've been talking about it uh, let's actually do it I know it's very boring and most people actually don't do this practice in depth they just say all right uh, I've did it once now I can do it well, this is not how it works man like <sighs> If you can really feel good about the animation and it turns out to be smooth and you feel like you understand the topic, it's a little bit different than if you you know try to understand the topic, someone told you it looks good, but but in the end you you still don't know anything. And I don't know how how do I do I say this the best way? I'm sorry if this sounds a little bit confusing. So the thing is, just because you know something about art or animation, it doesn't necessarily know that you understand the topic in depth and fully or completely. There's always a thing or two that you can still learn. So it doesn't matter of how often you do this practice. This practice will always be beneficial to you. So you will always will get you will always get better the more often you do it. So that is where we come to the point where it's all about trial and er error, like repetition. The more often you do something or the more often you try a, a certain certain practice, the the better you'll you'll simply get at this thing. So let's say um I'm very um, for me for example, I'm I'm in love when it comes to tricking parkour or like uh, very cool moves with super cool effects whatever right but yeah uh, I'm just gonna I'm just getting bad at it because I constantly try to pick up new information about this topic and trying to let my animate uh, animation be influenced by this so uh, what I'm doing is basically I'm just repeating um, the process like over a million times so it's it's simply just that like I'm not doing anything crazy or new I'm not using any cheats like you could do in GTA you know typing in a combination and then you simply have a have a tank or some shit this is, <laughs> this is not how it works so it's basically just really doing the thing over and over again until you fully understand it so it does uh so yeah try to pick up some um references once in a while pick it up again try to practice this one move maybe like the backflip and then just animate it over and over all right so yeah let's get into the bouncing ball oh yeah um uh sorry if, uh, if i'm picking this up again since um 
I'm animating on 24 FPS. My cells always stand for a duration of two frames. So basically I'm animating on 12 FPS and that's already enough for the audience to, um, you know, to have the illusion of a smooth motion. We, we already can see smooth motion at 12 FPS if it's E, uh, if the spacing is correct, if the easing is correct, if um, if the arcs are correct, then it will just simply look smooth to us. It will look very pleasant and it's, it's very helpful to know. Um, in anime, they, they, for example, like to use a lot of threes, sometimes fours, or even five. Maybe sometimes it's just a still and there's just one thing moving on the character, basically the cloth or the hair. Which, um, which already gives a lot of dynamic feel because they just simply add a camera on top of it. The, the camera is also a very, very crazy life hack, to be honest. Because of the camera, you, you can like emphasize certain scenes, give a new feeling to it, because you can see the scene from different, um, different perspective. And based on which perspective it is, it can be either, for example, very calm if the character, if the camera is very static and still, or it can be also very, very intense when the camera is shaking, everything is flying around, all these frames getting thrown at your face. But yeah, but we'll get back to the camera later on when I do the live stream, uh, like the, the the actual animation. Um, that I'm, I'm plan to do later on. Um, yeah, let's go with the bouncing ball. So what I'm gonna do right now is pretty helpful, especially for this kind of practice. You draw out the arc right away before you even draw the bouncing ball. Whoop. I don't know, it doesn't need to be super perfect. But yeah, so you get the idea. So our ball is now gonna follow this arc. I'm gonna animate the ball in blue. It's coming from a very top position. So this is basically the point where, where, the, uh, where the gravity is slowly pulling the ball down again. It's like it reached its maximum height and now it's becoming too heavy to fly even further up. So the gravity is pulling it down again. So we're gonna start off slow basically. Then increase the speed steadily frame by frame. So with the speed I'm talking about the actual spacing. The spacing is basically the distance between the frames that the ball is moving. Okay? If you have a really gr great spacing, the, the motion can feel very loose or very fast. Uh, it really depends on how you use it. To get a really good feeling for spacing, you need to experiment a lot. You, you need to try out a lot of things. That is why the bouncing ball practice is so important. It basically gives you already a basic idea about spacing, timing, and easing. Easing means if something slows down or, you know, uh, if something speeds up. It's very freaking important as well, especially if you want to, like, describe something with weight. Um... Not necessarily, Glus, to be honest. The X speed, if the X speed always has this, the same, the same thing, it will, st the, the, the spacing is still, uh, itself will be a little bit too consistent. So it's good if you have some flexibility within, within the, with the frames. I'm also using squash and stretch right here. So I'm basically um, stretching out the ball the faster it goes to emphasize the speed. Then I'm like squashing it when it like collides with the ground. 
then bouncing off with the same amount of spacing before it hits the ground and it's slowly going losing some speed and then increasing the speed again until it bounces yeah um i probably messed up again maybe the explanation is not super perfect but yeah messing up is part of the progress hopefully <laughs> You can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's fine. Um, okay, so this is my bouncing ball now. Bling, bling. But yeah, I think I actually uh, talked a little bit, uh, was a little bit wrong. So the speed should be probably consistent like Gullis mentioned just now. So what we're gonna do is just we're gonna reposition the 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 frames itself and have some more loose spacing. So we now basically fixed the spacing between the frames to get the uh, get the speed back. So yeah, great input glyphs. You just corrected me. Feel special now. <laughs> You corrected a professional animator. <laughs> what a joke. Yeah, I'm, I don't even consider myself as professional, by the way. So it doesn't matter what kind of skill you have. There will be always something you will probably uh, think as, all right, I don't know. This doesn't look right. Or maybe this is actually pretty bad. Being being an artist is also being like a really self-critical person after all. Whoops, I'm always always using the wrong brush. I don't know, man. The bouncing ball. This is the worst bouncing ball you will ever see in your whole career of animation. But yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it just it's just for the basic idea. Usually I would probably have to animate more frames as well. The squash over here is very off. Um, so maybe the frame is not even needed. Things like that. So yeah, welcome to my very terrible tutorial for animation. Glad you all joined in and have some fun. Okay, um... In case, in case you wanna like get a little bit no, uh, more to know about arcs timing and all that kind of stuff, there's a very good video about this, and I'm gonna like post the link in the in the chat, and may, also gonna add it later on to the video description. Um, Um, I'm also going to add a few more other video, video channels and stuff like that, that might be very helpful for you, depending on where you want to go. So, for example, there's a Strive for Animation that gives basically a whole overview about um, how anime industry in itself works, and how to get into the anime industry. It has podcasts with other animators that made it already, like me. Um... Yeah, give you a more like more um, in-depth guide about uh, what kind of positions are in the industry, what kind of stuff the uh, uh, yeah, what kind uh, if you, like uh, from from uh, anim key animator to in betweener to director, producer, etc. So yeah, you better uh, you better check out their channel later on um, um, hold on a second uh, principles of animation so 
Um. Oh Jesus. This video is I consider it as very helpful, so you better check it out later on after the stream. And yeah, it it just explains everything very well. I sometimes like to pick it up once in a while and watch it myself. Just to, you know, refresh my actual idea about foundations. There's plenty more of, the, of these kind of videos out there. And yeah, you definitely need to check these out. Alright, uh, my basic tutorial about fundamentals is now over basically. It was a very fast crash, uh, crash course basically. And now we're gonna go to the more theoretical topics that will be also very important for you. So we are getting to the point research now. Over here. So researching is very freaking important as an animator. So after all, you can just animate what you saw or what you have knowledge about. Um, there's also a point where observation comes in a lot. So, whether you are like to animate 2D or 3D, um, you will need a reference. You will need something that you can pick up from from your brain because you saw it somewhere or because you um, observed it somewhere. You you like researched within this topic. Um, for example, there's some um, you like this one person just asked what is Sakuga? Sakuga is basically just very very good animation. And it's it's a term that people came up with to describe, you know, Jap great Japanese animation. But there's also Sakuga about western industry. For example, we have the animator like James Baxter who did crazy amount of scenes on very popular popular um, Disney movies. I don't know which ones you have seen in your in, in the past, but they are very very good to the animation uh, animation films from the Western uh, standards as well. So um, for Sakuga, I really recommend to you know look up Sakuga mats on YouTube. Which is basically a compilation of one animator who worked on several shows or several scenes. It can there's also Western Sakuga mat, uh, there's Chinese Sakuga mat because all these mediums or all these animations all have different approaches in the way they execute their their animations. So um. I really, uh, I really would suggest that you guys research about this stuff for yourself. Find the animators that you like and just consume him on daily basis. Like for me, for example, I'm a maniac when it comes to Yutaka Nakamura. He is like my favorite animator ever. But I also have a lot of more interest in very realistic uh, um, animators like Okura. Hopefully I've said it right. He, he is like a, a master when it comes to animating realistic motion and it's very very um yeah it's it feels like you you look at the stuff and you feel like the characters are really alive because they move have so much weight behind their motion there's so much so much like it, it's very hard to describe but if you look up his work you will definitely be very impressed of what he did in, in his career. Um, Yutaka Nakamura himself, I want to talk a little bit about him since he's my main inspiration. He's very good at this very flashy action stuff. Sometimes you have these very small clips that are for a duration of six frames and they just zoom past you while all these other, uh, other scenes bombard you with insane effects, great timing, speed. Whatever, he's really trying to, you know, shoot his characters into the, let's say, stratosphere like he did with the Bakugo escape scene on My Hero Academia. Yeah, basically, anime boys go... I don't know how to, <laughs> how to say this. <laughs> but 
but they go whoosh. Um, yeah, he uses impact frames. He's exp I think he's just experim experimenting a lot. Yeah, then we have animators like Toshiyuki Inoue. You guys already seem to be very informed. You already all a lot of people already bring bring up a lot of names. That's very very good. So the the new people who like probably watch this to get more information, just look at the freaking chat. The the people the people already spamming names and giving you ideas about about where to research. Arifumi Imai is also very freaking awesome. Definitely, definitely. So, um, whatever favorite animator you have, research. Look him up, check his work daily, go through his stuff frame by frame. Like, try to understand the workflow, the thought process behind that person. If you can find gangers, if you can find layouts, which is basically... Uh, so for Gengar on layouts, Gengar is basically uh, the the already refined layout. That means the characters in the Gengar are already very clear. They they are shaded. There's highlights to it. The lines are already very um, very accurately drawn. And um, well, it depends on how good the animator is. He the the animator probably also got corrections from the director. So um. Yeah, that is what Gengar is. For layouts, it's basically rough animation. That's the first draft, like in our run cycle that I've done earlier. You could say this is this is my layout. It's a very rough layout, though. Like it, it basically has any information except for the pro body proportions. But sometimes that's enough already. So uh, yeah, please research in that kind of stuff. As I said, check the animation channel, Strive for Animation. I'm gonna link this too now. And I'm also gonna link them later on when I when the video is uploaded in the channel descriptions. I'm also gonna add try to add some timestamps um, on on where we are with the certain topics that I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so uh, for the people who's gonna watch it later, you can definitely pick this all up later. Uh, and yeah, so Strife for Animation, very good YouTube channel. Friends of mine host it, um, that I'm in contact with from time to time. Z they are very educational. It might be very boring to look at first, but you will definitely get a lot of very important information about the industry itself, especially if you want to become a professional animator. So, um, yeah, so how to research, always try to look around, try to also join communities, because in communities, the really fun part about communities is that they exchange a lot of information on these. It doesn't matter if it's, um, it doesn't matter if it's, uh, like communities like uh, Discord servers, forums, um, maybe Facebook groups, whatever it is, you know, just join these communities, get started, get into contact, get in touch with other people. You will probably find a few people that like your work and you like theirs. You will get along with them and then you can exchange information back and forth. You will find new things every day. That basically keep you going, giving you more information about the, the stuff you want to learn. And you simply start to grow together. Especially through this, through this community, you will also find a very valuable source for your motivation and inspiration. Um, so yeah, don't neglect the, the really power of communication and communities. It's very, very freaking important, and especially as an ar artist, um, you you really will need that. You always need someone who gives a little bit feedback or, or feedback. So, um, for feedback, that's another topic, by the way. So, it can help to get feedback from other people, and that's also where things become. 
Um, a little bit more complicated. So, um, if you want to give feedback to someone else, then you can definitely do that without knowing anything. You can tell the person, oh, um, that was a little bit too fast for me, or, yeah, I, I don't think this movement looks so good, or, mm, something is bothering me. Like, you can definitely tell the person, but the per you also need to consider that the person himself is still learning. Some of you really, some new animators have the biggest problem is a uh, biggest problem that they have troubles to take this CNC or like this uh, comment. CNC stands for comment and criticism, by the way. So uh, they have problem to take this criticism, and that then they will basically just um, yeah, they will basically not be able to work with the information that they get because they just simply block it off they they think it's very they take this very personal and that's where you're you're like basically limiting yourself it doesn't matter what kind of person the 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 other guy is if he is in if you think he is an asshole he still might be able to give you valuable cnc you might not want to hear it but he might be right so I've came across this very often in my career, animation career. There's a lot of people who told me their different opinions that completely saw different from me and I couldn't get along with these people at all. Like I couldn't stand them at all. But they were freaking right when it came to the animation part. They, they just gave valuable criticism that helped me to actually improve. And they gave me a new, new way of thinking about how I, I should approach my animations. So yeah, don't neglect anyone in their criticism. It Of course it's very hard to take all the criticism at once if there's like a massive amount of text like flying towards you. But then you just need to break it down and go, go on to it step by step. Of course you cannot learn instantly from from all the all the information that someone else wants trying to give you but yeah, try to take what you can use and then simply try to stack onto it. There are certain ways, certain methods that you will prefer as an animator over time. Certain habits that you will like to stick to. That's fine. But that shouldn't, you know, shouldn't be your excuse to stay within this comfort zone. Uh, comfort zone. So always try, try to seek for more, always look for more. Always aim for more and always be very self-critical with yourself without dragging your ego down. Like, still still be aware about what you can do or how far you got. Um, it's very, very, it's very, very tough as an artist because um, most artists um, tend to have like... Uh, uh, they are mentally conflicted. Let's say it like this. Um, so yeah, but as I said, try to try to stay on the ground with both feet, yet be um, very open to all kind of uh, thoughts and thought uh, from from other people. Okay. You do art as for fun. You do it for ho for a hobby. You do art because you like it. It's your passion. So you can just keep doing it, even if people tell you that they don't like it. You will get this feedback. Like you will, at some point, people will tell you they see things differently, and that is fine. Okay. Um. Yeah, that is where we come to trial and error. Again, do the mistakes. Make sure to make plenty of mistakes. Um, you will have days where everything goes very smoothly, the animation will turn out very cool, you will be very happy about it. And then there will be days where everything you do it looks like shit, and you hate it, you don't want to live on this planet anymore, I don't know <laughs> whatever thought you will have. But, yeah, that's basically what what's, uh, what's gonna happen. Since we're basically on the end of uh, all the topics I wanted to talk about, my crash course is now over. We are like 54 minutes in. 
Um, I think I, I like wrapped up most of the topics uh, I wanted to talk about. Thank you all for listening so far. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up my you know Q and A session. So if you have any questions, anything, anything you want to know about, please feel free to ask now. I'm gonna I'm gonna like answer your questions. I'm gonna animate for one more hour, so you can see my animation workflow and progress. And yeah, um, maybe you'll find a few things on the way how I do my animations. Maybe you you will. Um, I don't know, find some very interesting methods. As I said, ask your questions and I'm trying to answer them now. Okay. Damn, this 55 minutes went, on, went over pretty fast. It was very rough explained, but hopefully it wrap up most of the questions. Um, I'm gonna make a new animation file. Well, let's think what I'm gonna animate. Uh, I'm gonna make a new folder layer. Three more layers within this folder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, let's go. Um, can I send you my Giphy profile where I put my animations for critique? I mean, you can do that, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna get around to critique everything. I will probably take a look yeah, and give you a few, a few information. What have you learned since starting in the industry? I've learned so much, honestly. Um, from I learned how to draw actual actual decent drawings. I learned how to work with people that have that have a, where the language barrier. I learned about the whole anime industry itself, um, from the workflow, from how to deliver my work to uh, how to communicate with producer uh, uh, production managers and directors. Uh, I learned how to work with corrections. All that kind of stuff. Um, can you tell us about animations about explosions or something? I can try to add some explosion within this animation. Um, I'm gonna try to animate some effects if you want to. Um, fight scene. How to be a Sakuga Lord? Do you have BF? Do it. Do I look like I'm I'm gay, bro? I'm I'm actually I'm actually very hetero. Um, how did you get start getting job offers? So basically, how to get start start getting job offers is pretty simple for me. I put my stuff online on social media and like Twitter and Instagram, and at some point people just started contacting me through. Uh, through personal messages or through um, email. What is your process when you're analyzing your favorite animator works? I know you've got to look a frame by frame, but exactly should one look out for? Hmm, that's a very good question, actually. Um, so my process. Oof, how do I do that? Wait, I'm staring at my screen right now, right? Well, I got on. I'll go on this site called sakugaburu.com then I'm gonna press on search and now I always see like the front page there's always the, like the newest uploads in case I'm looking for something specific or something very quality I type in order double point score and now all these animations are ordered by score so I'm getting like the really high quality stuff right away so then I'm I'm just I'm just gonna click on something random, probably something all of you know, like for example the scene from One Punch Man, and then I either download the file or I'm I'm slowly scrolling through this. So as you can see, um, first of all this laser like appeared in an instant, 
So uh, there's there's no anticipation for it. The laser just appeared, and it basically serves as anticipation for for the debris that's happening next. And then the camera motion is getting all shaky to actually emphasize the power. The frame itself is actually not changing. So uh, the the cell remains the same. Uh, wait, not the frame, the cell. Like the drawing itself remains the same, but there's just camera 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 shake added to it. After this, there's like a f little bit of motion when the s camera is slowly sh coming down a little bit, and you see all these freaking particles flying around. Yeah, this is probably mostly handled by the in-betweener, by the way. So the key animator made like maybe two keys or three keys for this, and the rest of the motion is basically in-betweener. On the next instant, you see the explosion. Like the the freaking lava that's like burning away everything. On another instant, it's very interesting to look at, to look at. In front, you can see things melting away. The closer they are, there's more there's more spacing to it, so that it's more movement. So that can emphasize the death a little bit. Yeah, and then you just go through it step by step, seeing seeing how the 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 things move. Uh, how the the character or like the drawing remain positioned on the side, but they are still they are just changing in uh, in silhouette and shapes. So now there is like rotating. It's like burrows rotating around, strong uh, like having Saitama um you know grabbed on his uh, on on his um cape basically, and then you have this very strong pose of. Where he throws him towards the camera, and he's like extending his pose. He basically broke his spine in this one to just emphasize how, how um, dynamic the pose is. We as an audience might not even realize that within this one frame because it's just so fast, and the camera shake also like makes it a little bit harder to follow up. Next scene, you can see Saitama coming in from from the top of this of the view, and then instantly. You know, getting smaller frame by frame, they basically uh, turn into some kind of trails, very easily drawn, very simple, but it just looks very cool because it gives a sense of depth and scale because of the background as well. Yeah, they are coming back in. You see how Boros looks freaking massive in front of Saitama right here. Uh, that really gives an, a really strong feeling for us, and uh, we will think like, "Oh wow, dude, this guy." It basically the the way it's shaded, it looks very, you know, terrifying, very powerful. The way it, the way the lighting and uh, stuff works, the A that's glowing, things like that. You know, just try to to break down all these small parts that you can see. Uh, see uh, and you know just try to follow up. You can see how how fast these freaking cuts are. Like you you have like a a split second where you can see the fist, and you can see the freaking A just I don't know looking at him. And then in the next one he's already punching Saitama and damn there he goes. Yutaka likes to use a lot of small cuts like these where he just have certain images showing up, but for us, for us, it looks all very fast, but it also still makes sense. Like, what Yutaka is mostly delivering is not the images, but the feeling of the of the intense uh, of the of the freaking action scene. That's something like that I really appreciate on his animations. He is more about the feeling instead of the actual sense behind it, and. That's why it's so fun to watch this animation. That's why it's so so um, exciting for us to watch it because he is he is like just straight up delivering the feeling right into your face. All right, so this is basically how I analyze, and I'm yeah I'm doing this with a lot of animators that I like. Um, Yutaka is one of the many many very very famous animators out there, probably the most famous one right now with Nori Matsumoto, Izo, and whatever. But I would not neglect uh, neglect people like uh, Inoue, for example. Um, he has a very, very realistic approach in terms of animation, as you can see right here. There's like his spacing is way less than Yutaka, and 
he has he is more thinking about how the character would actually move as a human like it, it's he, he doesn't go super whoosh and brut brut, I don't know man <laughs> you should definitely see see his works he has a lot of very uh, very educational very helpful stuff he is more like um, about this character acting and uh, you know given the character a very very convincing uh, co convincing way to uh, approach to the to the audience like uh, I don't know I'm sorry for this is sounded wrong he is he's just very good at you know reflecting reality within the characters even though they are fantasy characters we think they they are real on the way they behave um he also made a lot of tutorials and things like that that might be also very helpful to look out for so yeah go to sakugaburu observe a lot check out a lot of animators find the ones that you really like as i already previously mentioned it's very helpful um so more questions i don't have a girlfriend and i don't intend to have one how do you did you um i also don't intend to have like any relationship at all like i'm completely fine i am right now how do you choreograph the one 3d scene in your latest reel uh the one 3d scene i'm not pretty sure what you're referring to I started animating when I was 14, around 12 years ago, with Pivot Stick Figure Animator. You can see my whole history basically on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can see all my stupid videos with stupid, stupid comments, broken English, <laughs> whatsoever. It's very fun to look at and also very cringe for me. But I kept it uploaded so people can actually understand the path that I've been going. So. Oh man, that's so much. I don't I can't I can't follow up. Who orders some tea? Well I didn't. Do you ever do stuff on once 24 FPS in the industry? Well I sometimes use once, yeah. But um I'm not animating like whole sequences on once like I did on my newest news animation. Let's see, yeah. Uh, mmm my newest animation which part was it uh, it might be either this or this one we'll see um uh e3 e4 oh yeah this is the one where i basically animated most of the stuff on once as you can see so whenever i go to the next frame it, the frame is already changed and as animating on once can be very very tough especially if i have like just a limited amount of um you know knowledge so to actual animate on once you need to be you need to understand how ones actually work and to understand that you need to understand how twos work so i really suggest to animate on 12 fps before you're attempting to animate on uh, 24 fps because 24 fps re requires a lot of knowledge and you need to be able to sync in slower spacing. I don't know. It's it's an experimental thing. You might get there at some point. Mhm. Mm yeah, Shinji Hashimoto is also very great animator. That's, that's true. There are a lot of amazing animators. It's it's freaking awesome. I love animation. Can you analyze the club of sword of the stranger final fight? Well, um, I think Howard did this kind of stuff already. Not sure if I want to take over his job. Um, I would probably, my, my videos pro would probably uh, sound not that much different from his. 
Can you show some layers for the animation you did? Maybe a whole approach animation or not sure about how to do it. Oh yeah, I have one right open. How do you contact studios for freelance? I don't contact them, I get contacted. What did you do you uh, did you have well uh, I I mostly get contacted but sometimes I'm in talk with uh, other animators that I know that work in the industry and then I ask them to recommend me. So basically I'm um, uh, I'm getting recommended by other people sometimes. Um, uh, how animating 8 FPS. <laughs> I mean, whatever rides your bike, right? So, how do you notice your improvement? Um, actually, I don't. I don't notice my improvement after uh, until after maybe three months. Like between three months, I always see a little difference, or like a different approach on how I animate. Um, the improvement itself just happens very drastically my, uh, over a year, in my opinion. So it's actually a very slow and steady progress, and it's also very quiet. So you don't actually, you know, notice the improvement yourself. And sometimes it can be also very frustrating and also depressing because you feel like you're always on the running on the same spot, but actually you never do. You actually always learn as long you create something, as long you animate and you know do something consistently, you will naturally get better. But you just won't notice it. It's it's just part of the animator or the animation life. No. Uh, I do not know any Japanese. Like I know a few basic things like konnichiwa, hajime mashite, uh, but that's about it. <laughs> um, like I tried to study Japanese kanjis for a while, but uh, I already forgot everything I knew basically, and I don't know how to even you know pronounce these kanjis. I just know the mean a few meanings. Um, some more questions. How much time should I spend drawing and how much animating? I feel like I'm making progress in general when I'm drawing a lot in my sketchbook. Actually, yeah. So there were times where I was drawing more, and, but most of the time I'm actually animating. I think the it doesn't matter if you're either drawing your sketchbook or you're animate. But I feel animation can be superior in terms of coming to uh, in terms of drawing dynamic poses things from different perspectives and angles and also you get like a more natural feeling for for motion in general so uh, it will be, be more beneficial for you in the long terms if you really aim to be an animator if you want to be an illustrator sketching and drawing would be probably the more the, the thing you would uh, you would probably consider or prefer. Well, you can do both, but it's like you know, um, doing two different different sports. You know, the the one can benefit the other one, uh, the other, but um, yeah, it will take a lot of time to do these both sports at the same time. You know what I mean? Um. But yeah, if you want to get good really fast, you got to invest a lot of time anyway, so you got to commit. And the better you are drawing, the more it will benefit your quality in animation as well. Uh, it, as I said, it's like two sports that are very beneficial to each other. Uh, you definitely need to do both. What did you do to have that U, uh, UI and CSP? Um, well, I basically just dragged out the windows. You can see the window layer, the windows right here. And then you can activate the windows that you want to use. For example, yeah, um, things like a navi. I, I'm just using the ones that I'm, I'm needing. For example, the navigator. The navigator is just helpful for me. And, and when I like rotate my image and I want to get it back to the original, original setup, I just can reset. Uh, say, uh, click on reset rot rotation and it's back to normal. Then I need the sub tool so I can see uh, which tool I'm using right now. 
as you can see I'm pressing P uh, the, the, the hot key P hot key P brings me to pen and pa uh, pencils so this is pencils and that's the pen then I have hot key U which brings me to my lesser fill tool which is basically my to go sheet when I'm it's my sheet when I want to animate effects so I just basically drag around the the silhouette like with the lasso and then it will instantly uh, fill it that's the lasso fill tool I really like to use that one for effects all these effects that you see right here are done with lasso fill tool by the way none of this is like sketched previously it's all instantly just adding shapes um yeah I don't know, then I have my uh, animation cells, so whenever I switch my animation cell, um, I always have multiple layers onto my frames. Um, the animation cell will show me in which layer I am right now within the cell, basically. It's very helpful and convenient. On the right side you see my layers. There's plenty of layers as you can see, but it's just to the fact that I'm using animation folders. Um, uh, like I'm using folders for, for every cell. So one cell equals one folder, and within this folder I can have multiple layers. So I can do rough animation, cleanup, shading, everything within this one folder. Um, yeah, what else do I use? Color palette. And yeah, the tool property. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, in case you have Clip Studio Paint and you're wondering why it's so dark and why it looks like it it does, it's probably because I have the newest version and I updated it pre an update pretty frequently. Mm hmm. So. Well, I've never broken my spine when it came to animation. Um, I I always try to stand up every one or uh, two or three hours uh, after animating. So um, my spine got some time to regenerate. I'm also trying to look out for, you know, sitting straight in my chair and have like a really good posture. So my my back is in uh, is in um, isn't hurting too much. Okay. Um. Welcome. You're welcome, uh, Bernard. Agami. What kind of laptop would you recommend for so software and stuff can run without lagging or crashing specs? It depends on how much um how heavy your files gonna be. So, um. For example, you can probably animate smoothly on an iPad on with and use Clip Studio Paint, uh, Clip Studio Paint, and the iPad itself is kind of limited in the way uh, it has, um, you know, resources. Um, but yeah, um, if you if you want to want to have really smooth going, I would recommend to just get a gaming computer. I know it's very expensive and you might need to work a lot for it, but it will be worth it. I've been doing a lot of part-time jobs, a lot of normal jobs in the past in the past three years to actually be able to afford this computer and have like a really something something that I can really you know uh, do, where I don't need to worry about render times and stuff like that. And, and it can easily handle all the kind of animations that I do. Uh, without any troubles so yeah I really recommend to get a really good one and probably one that can stick with you for the next seven years also will be more better in the financially in the in the long run mm. Swing and titties, holy shit, dude! That's some crazy name. I'm not sure, man. The name alone doesn't want me doesn't want me to to criticize your work. I'm sorry, but no, dude. That's just like very very immature and 
I don't want to waste my time on that. Um, I apologize. Why are we still animating? Just to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> Every night I can feel my back about. Yeah, dude, take care of your body. Do some workout. Go for a run. Do go go for a walk once in a while. Do something. Do something with yourself. Stay healthy. Eat food. Drink water. Honestly, drink water, bro. Water is so powerful. Yeah, dude, just stay fucking healthy as animated. That's very, very important. Uh, check my videos on my channel. I'm definitely not gonna do that. Mm, don't have the time right now. Maybe if I'm more free, I'm gonna do, like, take care of everyone more individually again, but... This video, this this thing, what I'm doing right here is especially because I was responding to everyone individually all the time. And next time someone's going to ask me questions about how to get started, any tips, what software to use, etc. I'm just going to link them to the live stream. That's a whole, that's like the, the, the main reason why this, why I do this. Are you close to have free time? Not at all. Like, uh, I'm probably busy until the end of the year. Uh, like, it's... I got massive amounts to do. Um... If you are from Germany, do you earn much from working from, uh, from anime? Well, not at all. I'm not work. I'm not getting much money out of anime at all. Unless I'm gonna take tremendous amount of cuts that I'm barely able... that I'm barely able to finish. It depends on the production, though. Um, sometimes I'm lucky and uh, I get like really good offers from anime that that pay a little bit better. But anime itself will not be able to um, support you on the long run. So what I'm doing is also taking offers from studios from from London, for example, that pay very very good, and I just do some effects for the advertisement. Will you be achieving this so people can watch later on YouTube? Yeah, of course. That was... Mm, uh, already said this. Mm. Do you export these animations by PNG sequences or some other formats? Well, that depends also on the production. Um, for European studios, like, uh, like I said, from this one studio from London I'm working with, which is called Shotopop, I'm exporting PNG sequences, yes. For animation, though, I'm just exporting JPEGs, and then I'm just import, uh, importing each individual uh, cell. That means I'm just exporting the drawings themselves. The in animation we use time; uh, they use timesheets. So they will basically take your animation, put it later on into After Effects, and then use the t uh, the timing of your timesheet to you know set up the the cells correctly. Um. Will you stream on Twitch? I've used to do that quite a lot, but most people didn't came to watch. Uh, it was more... When I'm using Twitch, it's more personal. And if it's getting really personal, I'm probably streaming on my Discord server, which is not public. It is very private. Did you try Harmony? I haven't, and I'm actually not interested in trying it. I'm very good with... I'm very fine with Clips Studio Paint. I tried... Uh, Maya, a little bit of Blender, basically nothing. I tried Krita, I tried TV Paint, I tried, yeah, Clip Studio Paint, Macromedia Flash, Adobe Animate CC. Mm, I'd say quite a few softwares. When do you do a fight scene? Do you do a storyboard before you do it freely? Sometimes I do. Um, but I'm mostly doing my storyboards on paper, and they are basically random scribbles that nobody can read except for me. <laughs> it's just to get the basic idea down to what kind of scenes I want to do. All I need for that is stick figures, basically. Maybe you have some grid, or like drawing some grids to, like, you know, hold the angle that I, I want to animate the scene in and stuff. Do you approach studying anatomy by using simple shapes like boxes and adding the details muscles later on? Actually, um, I can, for that I can probably draw, uh, something. Like, I used to draw, I used to go very basic, 
like from from stick figure um, I started then adding details on another layer in like like some kind of um, trying to like imagine the skeleton I try to uh, draw the skeleton back then I don't know man I can st I don't know how many spines there are uh, how many uh, not spines um, ribs there are and stuff but yeah I try to get at least a basic idea about how the bones would be within the body and stuff like that so I will probably do it like this then draw the skeleton structure and on the next layer I would probably try to like get an idea for the muscles and how the muscles are connected and stuff like that. I, I used to do that a little bit back then when I, went, when I was starting out basically. Um, that was very helpful for me to understand the human body a little bit better and you know you you kind of find out of what's possible on how to how much you can actually you know, rotate torso and stuff like that or how muscles work how they behave when you re rotate the the arm for example or things like that it's it's very very helpful i think a lot of people neglect this knowledge or like you are not aware too much about this knowledge and that's also where you where the drawings will feel very off and things become a little bit more unnatural um, yeah kind of like this you know um yeah just go on step by step drawing things like uh, anatomy it's very 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 helpful Well, um, retiming your cells might sound like pain, but mm, I think they they have certain techniques. For example, there's even uh, for um, for Clip Studio Paint, there's already the toy timesheet. So you can just export the toy timesheet, add the toy timesheet to After Effects, and it will organize all the frames for you. So you don't need to set them up already anymore. It's very freaking convenient. So there's already a lot of tools for that. Don't need to worry about it. But yeah, anime is mostly hard work, so they do that. Super dynamic camera movements. Any tips? Uh Well, it depends on what you consider as dynamic. My best tip is to extend your canvas size, like I did right here. Um and then have your camera, you know, move uh, a little bit more freely over the canvas. Don't limit yourself to the actual, to the actual uh, basic frame, which is which is which is right here. Like, just use the other parts of the thing as well. Just use a kind of a quite a big canvas, and that way you can add very dynamic camera movement. Clips to your paint um, just requires like keyframes, keyframe key positions, and the rest is basically um, will be calculated from the software itself. It's very helpful. But I think other other animation softwares like TV Paint might have this feature too. Uh, do I prefer Japanese or Chinese Sakura? Definitely Japanese. Japanese animation has probably one of the mice, uh, most highest standards up to date. And also, in my opinion, also superior to Western Western animation. Mm, but yeah, it depends on which movies or which series you're talking about. There's probably a few Chinese shows that are also better than Japanese shows. There's probably also a few Western shows that are best, better than Japanese movies you know, or something. You know, there's like I, I'm a big fan of the Disney movies as I'm a big fan of the Ghibli movies. You know, I like them both. 
Can you show us what your choreography looks like by sketching an example and tell us what you think of while doing it? Yeah, I'm actually trying to start animating in a bit. Like, I'm just trying to respond to most questions for now. So you don't need to ask them later on. Um, anime production is very hard. In all honesty, it's probably one of the toughest productions out there in terms of uh, skill requirement, in terms of speed. You have really tight deadlines. Maybe sometimes I just have one or two weeks I actually do my layout and then two, two other weeks I actually do my ganger. I don't know, man. It's very freaking tough. And you need to be also very reliable. And sometimes the communication can be messy if you're, if you're not communicating enough. How to become a Sakuga Lord? Not sure what that is, but I don't know, man. If you want to, if you gonna want to be good at animation, I have bad news for you. Because good animators probably don't even think that they are that that good, you know. Well, but I think to answer your question, you just need ten years of experience at least to become a Sakuga Lord. Do you want to become a director again? Uh, actually, not really. <laughs> I want to do a few things for myself and maybe work with other people or collaborate. But I don't want to be responsible for a team too much. Or like, I don't want to correct the work of someone else. I would rather do work myself and animate something for myself. Layout is can be pretty much a pain, yeah. Sometimes it gets very exhausting if you always need to figure out new motion for every scene. Um, then you actually just wish that your brain can shut down and you can actually do ganger and just you know clean up frames. All right, let's animate something, okay? Let's actually get into it. Uh, I'm creating a 3D layer right here. A 3D layer just works in Clip Studio Paint. Now I have a grid actually, which is very freaking cool. I'm I'm a I'm a special person, and I don't like to draw dri uh, grids too much myself. I can now move it around how I need it. Um, I'm gonna have a slight angle. Gonna move it a little bit up. I'm gonna animate one motion for you guys, okay? But that will be about it, and it will probably be very rough too, so don't have your hopes high up that it's gonna be something very epic or special. Because uh, I don't have that much time, and I wanna get back into work in a bit. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another layer and since I have my my perspective ruler right here I can just, you know, click on these lines and they will instantly follow the the grid. It's like a cheat. This is for very lazy people like me who are who don't want to draw grids anymore. Though I really recommend to draw these grids yourself, especially if you want, if you're starting out. Um, so you get a little bit more understanding for one point, three point perspective, and all that kind of stuff. Did I say three point perspective? I mean two point. Three points already are uh, very complicated. One point, two point perspective is something that we will probably use most of the time. Well, that's what I'm using most of the time, at least. Mm. 
I don't know if I'm actually managing my time well. I just hope it works out, Cliffs. <laughs> it's uh, I'm I'm kind of suicidal sometimes, but most of the time it somehow works. I used to be on the Zeta Absolute Discord server, yeah, but um, I I left because I didn't feel too comfortable and I was more taking care of my own. So I'm still friends with people like uh, like Kazuma who created Zeta Absolute, and he's a very the, he's a very cool guy. I also met up with him in real life and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I really I really respect everyone on Zeta though. Like they are still still consider them as animator friends, even if I'm not in touch with them. They can always th these are the people I'm probably always there for. In case they have any questions or like if they want to talk about something I really do appreciate that if they contact if they if they contact me mm. I want to say thank you for stream like this. It really helps people to animate or start doing it, me included. I'm really, really, really happy about hearing something like this. And hopefully it's really the case. Um, in case, y y like, the very first start is always the hardest, in all honesty. Because you gotta learn so many new things, so many new stuff it's very all it's everything is out outside your comfort zone and it's uh, it's it's very rough i can understand getting started in animation can be very overwhelming there's so much information to grab so much stuff that you need to you need to research you need to know about and y you need to talk to, to so many people to actually get this information somewhere but yeah once you're s over this point where you like step out of your comfort zone, build up a routine and start to get more into animation itself, it actually becomes very fun. And that's just my opinion. And um, you feel like you will, the, the, after doing it for a couple of months and you see like the improvement on how you, you changed or on how much you, you grew within this one very little time, uh, that's probably the part where you start to like understand what animation might be about. Um, yeah, of course there are people who take a lot, a, a way longer time to actually grow and become a better animator over time. But that's that's because they they are not not trying to yeah, they they already you know fell into the next comfort zone they they basically trapped themselves into it so yeah always seek out for more always try to you know learn new stuff be always curious that's uh how a good friend of mine basically says it being curious is the most um is is, is like the one of the most helpful things Especially if you want to learn about softwares, animation, and stuff like this. Uh, it will be very beneficial in the long run if you st st keep staying interested. Um. So, is there any more questions, or are we true? Was I capable of answering most of them? Well, looks like I answered most of the questions, and I hopefully, yeah, I, I, I could answer most of the questions you, you guys were, were asking. I'm just checking if I didn't forget anyone. All right. Well then, uh, thank you so much. So uh, thank you so much for asking these questions. I'm yeah gonna go over to the next step, animating something real quick, and then we're gonna wrap up the stream in around an hour. I'm gonna show you how I animate. I'm gonna show you how I animate one scene. I always break down my animation into multiple scenes. 
and yeah that helps to decrease the file size and stuff like that okay I got my grid now that I can use looks very cool very easily done I always like to turn down the capacity right here uh, I'm just gonna add a bunch of frames it's all on twos but I might change the time later on so one guy wanted me to animate an explosion um, I'm gonna do that now Um, yeah, sometimes I tend to do stick figures for my first pass, but yeah, you're gonna see it now. Yes, the stream is gonna be uploaded. <sighs> okay, so... I'm gonna animate a scene where two characters will, uh, like, try to fight, and one character is basically... You know, dodging the other one, doing a f uh, uh, some kind of flip, and then I'm gonna finish off the scene with one of the characters like kind of exploding, <laughs> or like using an using an attack that kind of explodes the area around him. All right, let's do this. All right, first character comes in from this side right here. Um. I'm gonna use a little bit less of the sun. a little bit smaller brush. Yeah, you can feel free to turn on some music for yourself now. So I don't know, maybe you did that already. When you first uh, when you first joined the stream, I'm sorry it's very silent from my side. But I feel like uh, it was better for me to concentrate on what I was talking about. Hopefully, I didn't talk too much trash. <laughs> I'm just a human myself, so excuse me if if I said something wrong or um, anything bad. I'm n I'm not perfect either, okay. So you yeah, know I'm trying to figure out where to put the line to actually get the perspective down. Sometimes it's very hard to draw in perspective. Um, the first frame is always the hardest because that's where you're establishing the proportions of the character and also like the basic foundation for your for your animation and your drawing after this things will become more smoothly as you go on he's leaning a l way too much forward uh, I've been animating these kind of runs too often Let's have a, a more natural pose. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just, you know, selecting the body parts and then Yeah, um, I think I'm gonna add two factors. I'm gonna try to have like a kind of realistic approach for this character, and for the other character, it's gonna be more of a Sakuga character. It's gonna be like speeding up, coming real fast into the scene and stuff like this. Just <laughs> select less too faster than I make my coffee. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Wow, you, you must be a fast coffee maker then. Okay. Mm. Mm. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start drawing from the hips. 
because the hips is like the center of gravity for my figure. Um, it's very helpful for me to, you know, get, um, you know, keep track of my spacing then. So uh, that's why I like to start from the hips. I observed this this technique from another animator that I really look up to. Actually, most of the stuff that I'm animating, or most of the things that I'm doing, are mostly just observations uh, observations of animators that I've saw that I, that that I've been like following. For example, a really big influence for me in the Earl uh, when I started to become uh, uh, like trying to become better at full body animation was Andy. Um, it's his name. It's his name. Uh, his animations are very loose, and he's animating a lot with gestures and basically sticks, and also has a very great foundation for timing since he used to be a stick figure animator himself. Um, yeah. I've learned a lot by watching some of his streams back then. Same goes for animators like Plasma Ghost, who is recently very inactive. I hear there were rumors that he made this, uh, a second account and then tried to be pretend some Korean animator. Not sure if it's true. But nonetheless, I'm really big fan of his work. Then we have, of course, Wailin, um, Gareth. The whole crew basically they they all were very helpful for me in terms of uh, learning more on how to approach my own animations and i'm very thankful for for their work that it exists to be honest i've been learning a bunch from them when it comes to uh workflow and approach also yeah pivot blimp for example is also a very good animator all these all these people used to be stick figure animators back then, and yeah, very freaking helpful. helpful. Rotoscope, what that means, yeah, it's basically tracing frames, the already existing frames, or like an already existing thing. So for example, you can rotoscope real life animation, but you can also rotoscope animation from someone else. And it can happen that Oops, my character is getting a little bit too small. Um, yeah, rotoscoping itself can be very educational, but most people use it for wrong, for something wrong, and they steal or trace animation from someone else. Or like motion from they use real life motion so they can basically pretend that they an animator by rotoscoping this real life motion and that's very freaking wrong dude it's like there's no learning effect in it and in it will not be be beneficial in the long run so that's why rotoscoping is always a very controversial topic that I do not suggest when it comes to using it for work or like showing off your work if you just do it for yourself to learn something that's a whole nother story because that way you cannot harm anyone you just do it for yourself you know but if you're rotoscoping scoping over the work of someone else or using real life references to you know i uh, come uh, to your to i don't know to hide that you're actually a very bad animator. You will probably not learn a lot. Don't rotoscope other people's work. And especially do not claim it as your own. If your rotoscope always gives the resources of what your rotosoast, uh, roto, roto, rotosoast, <laughs> rotoscoped of. Be fair to other people.
as you can see I'm like using a combination of you know kind of stick and and full body like I'm just drawing gestures maybe probably um, for example over here I just need uh, the leg like, like the, the the back silhouette of the leg I don't I don't necessarily need to f fill in the um, the volume right here I'm drawing a rough shadow so I can always see the position of where he is in the space. I'm using this this line right here as a guideline for my head. So uh, he he there's no there will be no big uh, amount of resizing then. Though he needs to probably get a little bit smaller. The more he goes into into perspective into space. So what I'm gonna do, him, let him gonna do right now is I'm gonna like trying to let him turn on. <laughs> the speed of my lasso. Yeah, it's so fast you can't see it. Yeah, it's good that you agree. G G D G N G. Oh shit! How do I? F I can't even say your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Flasso. Well, he's pretty fast. I don't know if you all saw this really nice meme video of of, of Sonic. This is one guy who just animated a scene where you have Sonic and he looks very, very disturbing. And the only thing he is saying is, fast. And then he goes so fast that the whole world explodes. I'm not done with my work, work but I, I finished like first of the first half now. I I can move to to clean up clean up now. Jesus. But please don't talk about work here, man. No leaks about the the projects I'm working on. Please. No leaks. So yeah, my my dude is now doing is now doing a turn. So that I have a little bit of body rotation going on. It's Mike like making a little jump now. Mm -hmm. I'm drawing out a few details uh, here, so it's easy for me to keep track. I'm gonna try to get a bit faster now. I think I established my, my focus.
I definitely should turn down quit Discord right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, shouldn't be a big leak. You guys don't know anything. You didn't see anything. Jesus, that's why I'm scared of st streaming, to be honest. I saw all. Oh, damn. <laughs> so many times I see only people saying that a lot of frames good animation, but really the timing is probably more more important than the framing. Yeah, the timing is spacing. Also, the the drawings themselves have a very strong impact. So a lot of drawing, a lot of frames can be definitely very cool to look at, but it's just one way of approaching animation. It's like so many things you can do. It's very, very impressive. You will probably not miss out. Uh, not miss out the thing. If you try different approaches. So a lot of animators that use very limited amounts of frames, but their work is still very impressive and effective. Or some that lose, use very, very, impre uh, very expressive keys, for example, like Kamida. Or Imaishi. No, um, yeah, no, yeah, I'm still streaming. I will do a little animation. Try to get a decent result out. It will be very rough though, so... As you can see, I'm clearly using the stick figure method, especially for drawing the legs right here. I'm gonna play it as soon as I probably hit around 20 frames on both characters. 
uh, I already have been animating so much that I mostly can imagine uh, animation without looking at it. So the the only reason why I would look at it is to find mistakes. But yeah, I've been going a lot through these processes. So I'm very used to the most mistakes that I've done already. So he's not making much of a motion to, to dodge the other characters, he's just, you know, basically bowing down. As a character, I'm gonna edit so add him in soon as so I have a few frames done. But I have a rough idea already of how he will move and come into the frame. There might be some resizing already going on, so I uh, probably have to fix that up a little bit. Trying to scale my character a little. Uh, especially over here in this frame. Lose a lot of mass. Usually I wouldn't use that kind of brush, but that one is ve very much faster right now. But it also will uh, make the animation look way more rough. So everything is very less, uh, probably much less more detailed than I, I want it to be. It's just simply for, it's simply very good for gesture practice, like drawing gestures. Ha Hallo Tanjiro, sei du auch gegrüßt. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised so many people actually came around to watch this. Um, I'm gen generally happy for all your interest. Um, yeah, I'm sorry if the if I was a little bit too fast with some of the topics. But yeah, generally appreciate it. I think now is probably the phase where you m learn the most just by looking at me animating. So you can understand my workflow. So what I got so far are 14 frames. I can show them to you guys real quick. As you can see he is already very well aware that he's getting chased. Like looking back. And you know bowing down. So what I'm gonna do is since I have a really nice extended canvas. I'm gonna let the, let the fight take place more in this direction. Mm, 
animating gestures can be very fun because they are very loose and very easy to fix. So I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna extend my can uh, my canvas because now I realize how I wanna like have my fight be more in the direction of the left side. So I'm gonna add some more space to the to the left side now. Gonna extend it to one k okay, five hundred. So I bring back my 3D layer and add a few more lines. I don't know how much I will use, but the more lines and information I have, the easier will be it to move my characters on top onto them. And I really think these guidelines are very freaking helpful. I haven't even drunk my cafe. My, I wanted to drink coffee today, but I didn't yet. Might do it later. After this, I'm, I'm really getting started. <laughs> then I, like, my focus is much higher than... Okay, next character will be probably in layer B. I will now, in Clip Studio Paint, I can add a camera layer, which is very freaking cool. So now I have my camera right here. Bringing back my other character, getting, getting rid of the 3D layer. And as you can see, I can now uh, just say, all right, um, I want the character to actually follow, uh, like the camera to actually follow my character. So until this point, until right here, I'm gonna say, alright, the camera is following my character until this point. And now you can see the camera is actually following, following him. And now since the other character is gonna come in, the character, like the, the camera itself, will probably zoom more into that direction all of a sudden. But yeah, I gotta add in the other character first. He's gonna be like, sabunga sub fast, very fast. Um, I'm gonna offset his timing, so it looks a little bit more interesting. Mm, probably gonna use some ones too. Yeah, I'm not gonna use layer folders for this. Oh, maybe, oh, wait, maybe I should. I'm actually gonna use layer folders for this. Um. Yeah, I'm going to end it up with an explosion for the one person who requested it. I don't know if he's still watching, but maybe he's going to come back to the stream. Then at least you can see it. And I granted him his wish. <coughs> yeah, dude, there's not many ways to work as an animator in Germany. That's that's a hard part, but once you get an idea like of what you could do, it definitely becomes easier at some point. Okay. But yeah, the first the first part to get there is very freaking tough. There's just a few German 2D animators that I know. They made it so far and came on this professional level when it comes to traditional animation. And um, yeah, the names are basically uh, EA14, Francisca von Wolfen, um, Kazuma, Nahu. Um, yeah, there's another guy called Bork, but he he didn't really try to get into into in the industry yet, but like he already got the skill, I think. He's just very inactive from time to time. He's like, sometimes he's just gone. <laughs> he could probably be there too. Hmm. Okay, he's leaning forward a lot. Needs to stretch out, stretch out his popo a little bit. I didn't want to say. The, the word with A, S, oh shit I did. 
<laughs> I did say it. Oh no, I said S. So yeah, now I'm basically just using animation principles. He's now going down, so he's easing out. I think there's some resizing going on. Okay, but over here I know the character will come in with some really accelerated kick pose. He's like a character fi character karate fighter, bro. Woo, almost hit him on his head on his head. And now he's zooming right past him. other guy was very good and he dodged it hmm, I gotta like make sure the position is right so I'm gonna draw a little shadow so I know where he is basically moving in the space shadows are very freaking helpful and since he has a, quite a lot of spacing And he's, he's moving very fast, so he, he will slide a little bit when he lands. wonder if you should make him come in and like... I could either make him like really fast, like a s speedy Gonzalez, or like it could him just be like some... Usual character, karate, karate fighter, like an actual human, human person. Yeah, this this uh, gesture is very exaggerated and very deformed, but it will be fine for the for the animation, I think. Maybe I'm going to change it up a little bit. I think this better. Make it both? Yeah, I can make them have like some kind of special aura around their, around their fists or around their feet and stuff. Or like maybe he's actually doing some kind of flame kick. And then have a flame ki a flame flame tra uh, trail following his kick, stuff like that to have some follow through motion. I could do all kind of stuff now. Like this is there's a lot of opportunities or like like a lot of things I can definitely do right now. I can add some smoke when he's like uh, sliding now and.
He's now using his arms to balance himself out. And since he's like moving a little bit in perspective, he also gets smaller. Not that small, but smaller. So I'm gonna scale him a little bit. Repositioning correctly. Zip. Basically landing on his toes. Yeah, my gestures are alright in terms of motion, I think. But I really need to work uh, on my construction and on the way I draw my draw my gestures. Like sometimes they they really lack in actual animation, um, uh, like in actual art draftmanship, and that's definitely I want to work on something I want to work on when I'm done with most of the most of the work that I'm doing right now. I think it will also be benefit my actual animation skill a lot. It's definitely I also want to get more into into painting uh, feel like uh, it will be very good because if you if you paint a lot you'll basically get a really great idea about uh, volume and that might also like uh, increase your accuracy accuracy when it comes to uh, Drawing characters or like drawing uh, different kind of shapes. Yeah, fundamental practice and fundamentals is very freaking important. It's always really, really good. Make impact frame. <laughs> I'll, I'll think about it. I've been using doing this so often already. Uh, as much as I like Nakamura, impact frames uh, can be very um, misguiding, especially for new animators. I see a lot of people always try to do these very super high action Sakuga impact frames, whatever do things, but they really neglect and neglect uh, all the fundamentals that should be even more helpful. And most of them don't even understand like the actual the actual concept behind impact frames, even if you think impact frames look like they are nonsense, but they they aren't basically. Yutaka Nakamura uses impact frames because um, he is basically using moving light sources while he's using impact frames. So um, what that means is, for example, if I would have a light source that is, ba Yutaka always draws the light source as some kind of, you know, he has this, this cross, and he has this, this circle, which basically shows uh, where the light where the light source is, and then this cross is basically moving within these impact frames, and I'm not sure, 100% sure if I understand the way he approaches impact frames yet, like. There's still a few questions that I have. But like he's then, ex you know, from the light source onwards, he can extend the light source, like make the thing go bigger. And based on where your character is, the shading will also move. So that's why it still makes sense if it's smooth to us. I don't know, it's actually very freaking complicated when you think about it. And that's why uh, I think it might, it, it does look very cool, but most people really don't understand it. They draw like one impact frame, which looks, I don't know, the one impact frame looks like this. They have this one black screen and then they draw roughly with their, uh, with their freaking pan like this 
and make this is like basically how their freaking impact frames always look like and I'm dude I'm like dude do you trying to give me a seizure or something or like do you trying are you trying to give me a cancer I'm sorry if this sounds very rude right now but Honestly, don't use that shit if you if you don't even understand what's going on and or how to use it. Of course, it's good if you experiment and try it out, but don't slap this f shit in, into my face, man. Holy shit! This is something I'm I'm truly um I'm I'm truly thinking. Oh my god! This again, and sometimes I use very weird colors as well, like some really strong red or some blue that's mmm yeah tasty ah uh, I don't know man this is just it will look much better as soon you actually build up some drawing from foundation or fundamentals but yeah before that I do not recommend to attempt too many impact frames It will not make your animation look any better. <laughs> like, not at all. <laughs> Impact frames aren't random as you think they are. They This is definitely not true. There's a science behind them, unfortunately. I'm just saying this like this right now because I'm a really... Because I'm a, as I said, I'm a, just another Yutaka fanboy, and I feel kind of offended if I see these kind of impact frames. <laughs> yeah, the impact frames of scale can be very, very interesting, and it can be also look very cool. But yeah, you you need to at least understand how the light source moves. And how do you have the impact, you, you know, how to set up the impact frames. Most impact frames are mostly drawn very, I say, very, very strong strokes. Basically, very steady strokes. Okay. And then they, they can describe, like, uh, can be, like, wrapped around silhouette. It's all about the the way you draw these strokes. If it's like just scribbly scrubbly, nobody will nobody will definitely enjoy it. But if you have these strokes that kind of are, are very straight and you really take your time to draw these impact frames because these impact frames are also like some kind of paintings basically. They are like illustrations. And you need to think of them like that. They're just not random flashes, they are like actual illustrations. Okay? So take your time if you do them. At least do that. Instead of like... Giving me a seizure. <sighs> Animated fire impact frames are beautiful. As I said, if it's a beautiful illustration, yeah, they are beautiful. But impact frames take quite some time to do. Actually, Spencer Wan doesn't really consider his flames or the intro that he did for Castlevania as impact frames. And I don't consider this as impact frames as well. They are not base. They are not really moving light sources. They are just uh, how do I say? It's basically just a very well use of using smear smear frames or like um. I don't want to insult him, dude. I don't want to insult him. I don't want to say anything wrong right here because it's very it's highly complex. Highly complex. He has this. He basically has an ongoing flame the whole time within this Castlevania intro. 
and he's using this method to like transition from scene or from one scene into the next one. It's very, very interesting like to see it. But he doesn't consider it as impact frames. And since he is a creator of this, I should I think we should respect it as not being impact frames. Um So yeah. He made a tweet about it. It's like no, those aren't impact frames. And if he says that, I'm, I'm just believing it. As I said, he's a very great animator. I don't want to insult him. I think Spencer is probably one of the best animators in this day and age, especially when considering to his, uh, considering his age. He's like as old as me, and already is has a hell of a career behind him. One of the most inspiring animators I know. Like, very freaking impressive. But I hear a lot of stories that he's always been very good. Like uh, he already had a very good feeling for natural motion and stuff like that. So like some of these people that have this feeling also used to do sport or like are very interested in sport or maybe even um um you know uh, martial arts and stuff like that. So they naturally have a feeling for motion itself in, in their body because they actually did these kind of exercises. I think Spencer did tennis or something. I, I for myself, I, I, play, I, played, I played handball. Um, and I feel like this might be also a reason because uh, uh, why, why I'm actually so interested in motion. Because I've been seeing motion all my life and experienced like motion myself but yeah i did a lot of stick figure animation as well so that complements my skill a little bit too If you could say my uh, I have skill, I don't know. Don't want to sound cocky here. Because in the end, I still don't know anything. I'm just trying to tell you guys what I think that I know. Or I'm just trying to tell you guys my experience that I went through. I do not consider myself as very wise or like I, d I don't really know that much to be honest because I'm learning something every day myself you know and as I showed you I'm also doing a lot of mistakes especially when even on fundamentals you see this very terrible bouncing ball animation right Okay, so far we got uh, quite a few frames. Mm, looks pretty nice. I'm gonna let the camera follow follow the other character now.
So I'm gonna apply the camera to my animation and you will see how much more dynamic it instantly gets. It's very, very cool to look at. Oh, doing a one to three minute animation takes a very long time. I like how it's sliding, it looks really fun. Ooh. Slippery floor. But you can see already uh, how it looks like. I might play around with the timing over here. When he's like going down. Hmm. Oh, maybe I keep it smooth. Just animate them too. <sighs> yes, this is Clip Studio Paint. It says on the top of top of my of my file right here. I don't know if you can see it clearly. I don't know how big your screen is right now. The camera gives a touch. Yeah, cameras are awesome and very 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 helpful tip a uh, trick. That's why we love uh, movies so much. There's just a very very cool way of using a uh, Camera motion. Uh, like camera in itself to emphasize certain scenes. What also helps a lot in uh, what movies also like to do is uh, they they use um, composition a lot to emphasize certain feelings or certain certain atmosphere. So composition can be uh, is, is is like how basically is the scene is set up like how the where the characters are in the frame or like um how the background and the characters you know work together and then you have com composite uh, com uh, yeah the composition also there's also like something like called colors composition and that gives an um, even deeper feel of how the scene looks like so for example if you have a lot of red and dark colors you also have this very uh, dangerous, uh, evil kind of feeling to it, maybe. Or maybe if you have some very strong blue with uh, a blue sky with with mountains, flowers and stuff like that. You have this really beautiful, calming, relaxing feel while you look at the scene. You might not be aware about it, but as soon as you do make yourself aware about it, you probably can appreciate some of these scenes even um e even deeper yeah photography is uh, photography is super awesome definitely should more i should definitely look more into that myself so now yeah this guy is now he he, he caught himself with this one arm now he's pushing him himself off The pose looks so weird. <laughs> I probably there's probably better ways to draw this. But sometimes poses tend to look very weird. It's it really depends on the perspective that's been used and what what angle, all that kind of stuff. And so you just have to go with the flow. Just use what, take what, what you can use.
But yeah, I'm animating mostly just in twos, and you can see how smooth it is, right? Uh, yeah, I'm also animating straight ahead, so n I don't know what kind of poses I will get across. I just animate the gesture and have a, like a rough idea from f frame from frame to frame. I like making st uh, one frame at a time to to make a step forward. Post to uh, oh, I really like this the straight ahead man. You never know what you will get, but the end result could look very cool if you get a like if you have like a rough idea about what you actually want to animate. Okay, this pose looks so fucking awkward and so bad. Holy shit. I'm swearing a lot by the way. It's just it's just me. Sorry. I put I feel like whenever I swear someone leaves. <laughs> Okay, he's now pushing himself off. Now he's making a quick turn. Getting himself into position so he's ready to receive the next attack. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up, this animation, in around for um, when it reaches around two and a half seconds. So I will need to have some. Sp so probably the next attack will probably be the last one already. So I'm sorry if I don't go. If I add, don't add too much to it. I'm alre already streaming way above the time that I actually plan to stream. And we'll probably go on until around 3 hours or something. Oh, or maybe maybe four. I don't know. Depends on how far, how much fun I'm I'm having right now. But yeah, after that I really need to stop, because I have some stuff to do. He's now taking in a fight stance. I think I'm I broke the perspective a little bit on the on the mo uh, on some of the stuff, so I wasn't paying too much attention to it, unfortunately. It's also something I need to work on. So some of the poses might not be in perfect perspective. But yeah, in animation, nothing seems to be very perfect, and nothing's actually perfect. That's so that's fine. Like the mistakes make this thing more unique.
sent the boo a link. Yeah, I plan to have this uploaded. It should be uploaded right when I stop the stream, basically. Yeah, hopefully uh, I don't get demonetized for all the bad words that I said. You have achieved comedy. It's good to know that I'm not the only one talking here. Yeah, it's, uh, I like that you guys are active and have a great... You should be uploaded on my channel. Maybe. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise the footage is lost. And I did this all for nothing. Oh Jesus. Anyways, uh, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, I'm about to finish this animation soon. Uh, go make yourself a cup of coffee. You deserve it. I'm going to do it later. In just a bit. Let me please finish my animation. I do not feel at ease if I don't finish up at least the rough draft right here. I don't like to f like stop right in between. So he has like a little bounce now, it's like bouncing a little bit with the. Okay, now it's getting a little bit more complicated. It depends on who's gonna make his first move, basically, now. Let's say uh, the other guy who's already very aggressive and came in very aggressively. Oh, he needs a, a few more frames, by the way. I'm gonna add some frames for him as well so it makes sense he doesn't appear out of nowhere so what i'm doing right now is i'm an animating backwards that's something uh something i've been learning because uh, because of all these fight choreographies once you have the key pose you can just you know animate it backwards done He needs to be a little bit different spaced.
and for smear frames I mostly you know um, draw uh, draw like a sm draw the smear silhouette of the previous frame like this and then I just move it very epic trick and now it looks like this Um, yeah, it's starting to take a little bit longer to render. Yeah, it looks looks decent. I'm not very good at animating poses, man. Need to need to have new poses. I think I need to research a little or do some studies. I think so. I think he also uh, changed a little bit of. Oh, actually, you have a really cool idea now for the motion right here. Uh, let me animate this. He's now doing some kind of crazy side flip kick thing, and then everything's gone. And then I'm gonna add an effect or explosion, and then I'm gonna finish off the animation. <laughs> I could maybe like, if there would be a wall right here, man. I could maybe let let him r run t run along the wall right here and then I don't know <laughs> do something crazy. Uh, that's why it's very important to actually have backgrounds inside your animation already, or like have layouts for the background. That way you can you know let your character interact with the background as well. That gives much more possibilities to animate motion. But yeah, I'm not gonna do that right now. So. Maybe next time. That's something I will probably try to do for personal animation at some point. But yeah, he's doing some very different motion. Uh, I think he has too much spacing over here. Actually, he should be... Be from position wise, maybe like here, that would make more sense. So, I have the easing, you know, because so the distance gets just slightly bigger. If I if I change the distance too much, he'll become Speedy Gonzalez, and uh, we don't want that. But yeah, I'm almost done. I'm almost done with the animation. It's not that much anymore. He's so now swinging up his arms to change the body weight. Maybe he's trying to grab him or something, and then he's trying to give him a knee. But I could also like give him big spacing now, so he's like lifting his himself up in the air, and then changing the changing the direction of motion by the way he's pressing himself up. Makes the animation surprising and interesting.
going to be a little bit harder. Perspective changes a lot too. He is trying to knee him basically. Give him a knee in his face. But he's trying to dodge it. Or maybe he's doing some weirdest move. Acha. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissor attack. I choose rock. <laughs> ah. I guess it's messing up. I guess OBS is messing up. I guess it's time to to finish. OBS wants me to finish finish too, man. The stream been going on for long enough. It also tells me to go back to work. Good guy OBS, do your work. Which is what it's trying to tell me. Yeah, they they're both trying to to attack each other now. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I guess we're gonna end it with a nutcracker.
Oh shit. Rest in peace, nuts. He's diving right in. Okay. Just gonna show you how I animate explosions. <laughs> Jesus. Lord and Savior, someone save them. Okay, explosion time, I guess. I will need a few more frames to draw this. What I'm trying to do now is just I'm drawing a few random bunch of random shapes. Mm, well, not all random. They all come from the source of the, oops, of the nut cracking, cracking move. I'm just trying to draw kind of some kind of shapes around it. And based on where how you set the line and what angle it is, uh, you can kind of describe the, the perspective and the curve of it. Mm. All right. I'll just go with two more frames. The final animation will be posted at my YouTube probably. Um, yeah, uh, in the community tag.
not sure if I'm gonna upload this maybe as a doodle on Instagram in the story but I don't think I'm gonna upload this to my actual uh, Twitter or something or it's just another practice thing it's nothing refined it's nothing I spend too much time on but yeah, I managed to uh, wrap it up in around three hours. Hey, uh, big club. A little bit, one hour more than expected, but that's that's okay. I guess. Oh yeah, that's basically how you animate an explosion. If you want to go more into detail, you probably need to add colors, highlights, uh, etc. Okay, that's animation. I'm done. Uh, oh wait, gotta do the camera. Gonna add some camera shake by just moving the camera back and forth. And maybe I'm gonna scale the camera. For this arrest. Okay. Now that's my animation. That's that's it. Uh. Oops. Always click on the wrong one. Thank you all for coming around. Hopefully you had a nice time. Um, I'm gonna play it for you if you want. It's not, it's not very freaking perfect, but yeah, it's a epic nutcracker explosions. <laughs> This is straight ahead, so basically everything I animate are keyframes. Or like the in-betweens are already included in my thought process. It's a super nutcrack, nutcrack bomb animation. Yeah, I hope you had a good time. Hope you learned a little bit, or maybe uh, not. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Big year. It doesn't work for 45. Alright, I'm gonna stop the stream officially over here. Where is my OBS? See ya guys!